Uh, so now I'd like to move on to recording with two mics and talk about some of the techniques and, and uh, approaches that you can use to get a good sound that way. Uh, so I have two KM184s here, and I'm going to be using uh, one mic stand, but you could use two mic stands for any of these setups. But I've got a sort of a handy little uh, adapter that holds these microphones and holds them uh, conveniently. Here's a different one that you can mount the microphones here and spin it around and move the mics. Uh, but what this allows me to do is to easily move all the mics as a unit without worrying about the relative position of the mics. Uh, so let's talk about this particular configuration. This is a configuration called XY. Basically, the microphones are at 90 degree angle to each other, and they're positioned as close as I can so that the capsules are, are as close together as I can get them. What that does is give me microphones that are very closely aligned with regards to phase, which is uh, one concern that people have when recording to stereo. It just makes the, the sound more mono-compatible if you ever had to release the sound as a mono uh, recording. Uh, so with this setup, I'm actually going to pick up one speaker through one microphone, the other speaker from the other microphone. It creates a nice stereo effect. To get a nice stereo effect, we have to be sure that these mics are set balanced. And since I'm using two nearly identical mics, I will set my preamp levels to be the same for each mic, and then we'll just play with the position in order to get the microphones balanced. Now, for a good starting spot is the same spot that we used for a single mic. We'll just treat these mics as if they're one and aim them sort of at where the body meets the neck. So now I'd like to take a look at a different mic setup that's just generally called spaced pairs. And this isn't a, a, a locked, fixed position. What it really means is that you have two separate microphones. I've got them on two different stands, and that they're spaced out. The exact position uh, can be very flexible, and you'll want to experiment with it. The way I'm set up here, I've got one microphone aimed roughly where the body meets the neck, and I've got another one aimed below the bridge. But uh, we could move these mics further apart. We could move them closer together. If you move them out, you're going to get a slightly more spacious sound. And if you move them together, it'll be a little tighter and more focused. And again, as with all the miking techniques, you want to experiment with how close you are, how far away you are, and you want to avoid any of the mics aimed into the sound hole. So this is a fairly common uh, configuration. One nice thing about these is that the balance is pretty much under your control. You can adjust the, the relative balance on your preamp. And again, your, your meters come in handy for balancing things. We can look at this, and if I play the chord, we want to see that the levels on the VU meters are about the same. And also notice this pattern, which is a little wider, so you can tell that it's a little more spacious sound, the, the width. But it's also still aligned and straight up and down. Now that, of course, is just a, one indication that you can use, and it's kind of nice to learn to use these meters when you're home recording because you can look at them from across the room. But what really matters is how does it sound. And so when you're setting yourself up, uh, headphones, of course, are a good thing to use. So I'll just put on a set of headphones while I'm tracking, play around, position the mic, and try to find a sweet spot while I'm, uh, while I'm recording. And then also, a lot of times, uh, headphones are just a first pass, and what you want to do once you think you've got the sound right Everything sounds good in the headphones. Everything looks right on the levels of, on your meters. You'll want to actually record a little bit. Just record a few bars and then play it back. And if you like what you hear, great, you're done. If not, come back and move the mics a little bit. Eventually, with a lot of practice, you'll be able to learn to correlate where the mics are positioned, what you hear in the headphones, what you hear on the speakers, and what you see on the meters. And you'll get a little bit faster at getting a sound. But at first, you'll want to spend a lot of time experimenting with positioning these mics in different places.